Now that we have the law of sines at our disposal, let's see how we can use it. So um, just as an example, let's uh, solve the triangle in this picture. Now, I guess first I should say exactly what solve means in context of a triangle. And when you're talking about a triangle, what the word solve means, so to solve the triangle means to find all, all possibilities for unknown sides and angles. Okay, so um, sometimes there will be no possible triangles that fit the description of the measurements that we have. Sometimes there will be exactly one, and sometimes there may be more than one. Um, it just depends on sort of what measurements you start with. So in this triangle, uh, we start out knowing an ang two of two angles and one of the sides that is not between the two angles. This situation is called side side angle. Um, knowing th what what this situation is called isn't important as long as you uh, sort of think your way through the process of how to use the law of sines. So um, it'll be easier to write down the law of sines if we name all of the sides and angles. And as we name these, I'm going to stick with the convention that uppercase letters will be the angles, lowercase letters will be the sides, and the side opposite an angle has the same letter for its name, just in a different case. So this lower left angle, if we call that A, then that means this opposite side is little a, and then maybe the lower right angle, which we don't know, we could call B, and then the opposite side would be little b. And then this top angle we could call capital C, and the lower side would be little c. Okay, so to use the law of sines, right, if you look over here in the law of sines, each piece of the law of sines has a, uh, each piece in the law of sines has an angle and the opposite side. So to be, to be able to make progress with the law of sines, you're going to need to know at least one pair of an angle and the side opposite that angle. In this triangle, you can see we know the side little a and the angle capital A. So we should use some version of the law of sines that has the a's in it. So sine a over little a. Okay, now for the other side of the law of sines, we can choose to either have the version with the b's or the version with the c's. And uh, we know one of the two C's. We know the angle capital C is 30 degrees. So if we use the version of the law of sines with C's, then there will be only one unknown in the equation that we write down. And that sounds like a good idea. So let's use the version of the law of sines with the C's in it. Okay. Now the only thing that we don't know in this situation is this side length little c. So I find it a little easier before I start putting things in and doing calculations. Um, because both sides of this equation are ratios, I find it a little easier just to uh, rearrange the ratio so that uh, the thing that I want is in the numerator. So you can flip both of these fractions upside down. So A over sine of capital A is equal to C over sine of capital C. In fact, some, some people write the law of sines this way with the sides on top instead of this way, like our book does, with the angles on top. You can do it either way. They mean the same thing. Okay, so we have this. We've chosen the version of the law of sines that we're going to use. Now we can put everything we know in here. Uh, little a is 5. The angle capital A is 70 degrees. And then on the other side, the side little c we don't know yet, and the angle capital C is 30 degrees. Okay, now we can solve this equation since it only has one unknown. So we can start by maybe multiplying both sides of this by sine of 30 degrees. Okay, on the right-hand side, these simplify and we get c is equal to sine of 30 degrees divided by sine of 70 degrees times 5. Okay, and now we can dump this all into a calculator. Sine 30 degrees, we know exactly, that's a half, but sine 70 degrees, well, 70 isn't 
uh, one of those nice angles, so we're going to have to use a calculator to get a decimal approximation for this. And it's something like 2.6604. Okay, so now we know this bottom side. All that's left is to find the side B and the angle capital B. Well, um, the, really the only tool we have our, at our disposal is the law of sines, but also that the sum of angles in a triangle is equal to a half term. So that's 180 degrees or pi radians, depending on the unit measure you're using. Since we're using degrees, that means that uh, A capital A plus capital B plus capital C is equal to 180 degrees. Capital A we know is 70 degrees. Capital B we don't know yet. Capital C was 30 degrees. Those have to add up to 180. And when we solve this for the only remaining unknown angle B, we get 80 degrees. All right. So now that we know the angle B, the only thing left that we don't know is the side little b. So we can use the law of sines with b in it to find the unknown side b. So maybe we can do that down here. So let's see, we have, let's put the sides on top since the side b is the thing we don't know. So, and let's reuse our a's. So side a over sine of angle a is equal to side b over sine of angle b. Now we can put in everything we know. A was 5, sine A, so uh, angle A is 70 degrees. The side length B we don't know yet. And the angle B is 80 degrees. And then we can solve this for B. B is sine 80 degrees divided by sine 70 degrees times 5. And again, we can dump this into a calculator to see what we get. That's something like 5.24. OK, so now we know all of the unknown angles and sides. The unknown angle B was 80 degrees. The unknown side B was about 5.24, and the unknown side C was 2.66, approximately. OK, that worked pretty well. Let's try uh, a different initial situation. So in this situation, we know two angles and the side that's between them. So this situation is called angle side angle. Uh, the word order is important here. The last one was side angle angle. This one is angle side angle, and that's because the side is between the two angles that we know. Again, the name isn't so important as long as you think your way through the process of how you're going to use the law of sines. Uh, well, let's start out by naming everything like we did before. So A, B, and C for our angles, and then our sides. Our little c goes here, little a goes over here, and little b is opposite the angle b. And then we'll do what we did before. We need to choose one of these pieces of the law of sines that we know both the side and the angle for. But if you look at this triangle, we don't know both a, little a, and capital A. We don't know both little b and capital B. And we don't know little c and capital C. So there aren't any pairs that we know. But, you know, since we know two angles, we can always find the third angle. Once you know two angles, finding the third angle is uh, just a matter of a little subtraction. So in any triangle, A plus B plus C is 180 degrees. A is 25 degrees. B is 120 degrees. C we don't know yet, and that has to equal 180 degrees. So C plus 145 is 180. And that means C has to be 35 degrees. And now that we know all the angles, 
now uh, we can now we finally know a an angle side pair here so we should use the version of the law of sines that has the c's in it since we're going to ultimately be looking either for the side b or the side a since those are the only unknowns left let's use let's turn the law of sines upside down to get our sides on top so we know we want to use the version of the law of sines that has the c's in it so sine little c over, I'm sorry, side little c over sine of the angle capital C. And we know both angles for A and B, but neither side, so let's start with A, I guess. So this is equal to little a over sine of capital A. Now we can put everything that we know in here. So little c is 4 over sine of 35 degrees equals little a we don't know over sine of 25 degrees. Solving this for little a, we get sine of 25 degrees over sine of 35 degrees times 4. And again, these aren't nice angles, so we're going to have to dump this into a calculator. And uh, we got something like 2.947, turns out. Okay. And now let's find our Bs. So again, C over sine capital C equals little b over sine capital B. And now we can put everything we know in here. So sine, uh, a little c was 4 over sine 35 degrees equals little b over sine 120 degrees. Let's solve that for b. We get b equals sine 120 over sine 35 times 4 and dump that into a calculator and you get 6.040 approximately. Okay, so now we know our unknown, all the unknowns in the original triangle. The angle C was 35 degrees. The side A was 2.94 and the side B was 6.040. All right. So there's one more possibility that we're going to have to look at where the law of sines will get us everything we need to know, and that's the side-side angle possibility. But it turns out that the side-side angle possibility is actually a fair bit trickier, so we're going to have to be careful.